Alright, we're finally getting close to the point where I can try firing this setup for the first time. I soldered in the Replica K Networks. I know I talked earlier about trying to make some kind of socket for these so I could remove them if needed, but I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that these will work alright. This one uh, is the one I'm most concerned about. So this one I did actually uh, solder in in such a way that I could remove it without having to take this board out. What I did is I scavenged some pins from the original network or one of the others actually, I think from this guy and I soldered them in just so there was kind of a stump sticking up and then I just tacked on the three wires on this so if there's any kind of issue with the vertical not working right what I can do is just heat up those three joints, pop this out and I can tack in the original and see how uh, that works out all right, so I got the, this reposition. I can start putting these all these wires back up. What I'm going to do is just cut them short, so there's like a little bit of the original wire left, and just like maybe one loop, and then solder them on. I'm not going to wrap like ten turns around; it doesn't seem necessary. Uh, there is one network underneath the chassis I wanted to rebuild. That's for vertical. Retrace suppression. It's somewhere. There it is. That guy. I think it's two caps and a resistor, something like that. So it should be pretty simple. Uh, I've done resistance checks under vertical output transformer and filter choke, and audio output transformer, and they all seem to be okay. One thing I haven't done yet, though, is I want to pop this cover off. I believe there are some quarter-inch screws. I think I see one down here, and there's some elsewhere. And then you can lift this whole thing up to really expose the flyback. And there's also uh, at least one resistor inside there. I want to check. Also, give me a chance to clean off and inspect that flyback more closely. All right. So once all that's taken care of. What I want to try doing is powering this setup with the fusible resistor pulled out. That would normally go in right here. What that will allow me to do is just apply power to the tube filaments. So with that guy out of the circuit, no B plus supply to the set. We'll just have power going down here through that thermistor and this resistor network and so on. Now, I don't have the picture tube hooked up, which goes here, which means we will not have continuity throughout the tube filaments. So what I plan on doing is substituting a power resistor for it. I'll go with a 10 ohm. The picture tube in this set has been replaced with a 6 volt version, and uh, 600 milliamps flow through it, so do a little ohm's law, use a 10 ohm resistor for that and uh, use at least 5 watts, that should work out alright. That is either this plug or this. And assuming that works out alright, the next thing will be to hook up the picture tube, which I'm going to have to examine more closely. See, I got the chassis up here on my workbench, but the picture tube is in the cabinet, and I'd really like to be able to power this up with the picture tube without having to install this back into the cabinet so I want to see if I can pull the picture tube off I think you can pull it up from the top of the cabinet somehow you know, it's got that swivel mechanism I think you can un unattach it or something and pull the whole top unit off and then I could lay, lay it down here on the workbench next to the chassis and plug it in here I'm almost done wiring this board back in and it's actually really not all that bad. I've just been cutting off these wires so there's only maybe three quarters of an inch left just to get one or two wraps around the post and then a little dab of solder. You just want to make sure that these lugs are clean. 
so the solder will adhere to them. And here is a closer look at that flyback. Way back in part one, I did test this out. And by testing, I mean I used an ohmmeter and checked the resistance on the wirings and compared it to what's on the schematic, and everything looked good. One thing that's puzzling though is this 15 ohm resistor here. Someone has shorted it out. Piece of wire across the top here. I'm thinking maybe they did that to increase the width. I am going to return it to the way it is on the schematic, so I'm going to take out that jumper. And uh, coating's not too bad, it's cracked. And if I apply a little pressure, I can flake it off. Down below, the things are a bit worse. Some chunks have actually fallen off, and I think it's melted a bit down here, too. It's actually kind of stuck to the chassis. So I'll clean that up a bit. As far as recoding it goes, I think this is in decent enough shape now that I don't really have any issues with trying to fire it up but uh, once I get the set running I think I will recode it so there's a question of do I flake all this stuff off and recode it or do I put the silicone over the remnants of the existing coating I guess I'll find that out by seeing how readily the stuff flakes off Here's my ICO 944 flyback transformer and yoke tester. I'm going to use it to double check that flyback. First thing I said to do is to check for continuity. And you do that by putting this function on continuity and then adjusting the calibration so that it's on the 80 mark there. And then you take your two alligator clips and you go around to the flyback and make sure you've got continuity through all the sections. Now I've already done that with my ohm meter so I know they're all good but just to show you how this works. So there I just put across two sections of the flyback and the needles well over into the green on the bottom range. That's the continuity. If there was a section that was burned open it would be something like that. It would stay way over on the right in the red bad range. So once you check through all the sections and see that you have continuity, you then want to check for any shorts. To do that, you go to shorts mode, and then you either put it on the 80 mark or 65. The 80 for an air core flyback, or 65 for an iron core, like this one. So I'll get it over to 65. Now for this, you take your two leads and you put one on the plate cap of the horizontal output tube and the other one on the cap for the high voltage rectifier. I also say you need to pull the high voltage rectifier tube out because there are two leads that come off the flyback that power the filament on this tube and they say this meter is so sensitive that having this tube in there will affect the reading. You also need to disconnect the yoke. Easy to do on this side because it simply unplugs from the chassis. Alright, and then you clip these to the caps. Be careful when you do this because this actually feeds a sine wave into the flyback and you get a little jolt out of it when you do that. It's actually kind of a good thing so that means it's working. Alright, so I can actually hear it singing because it's resonating right now with that test signal. And we're well into the good. So, that is fantastic. Alright, so... What's left? Well, I still want to clean up this flyback. I did chip away at this coating a little bit, and it does seem like it'll flake off pretty easily. So I think I will go ahead and try to recoat that. Um, and I want to check all the tubes. Some of them are in miserable shape like this horizontal output tube. I suspect somebody ran this set when it had some other issues and just killed this tube. A real common 
post I see online about these sets is that the horizontal output tube is glowing cherry red. So I suspect this tube got burned up pretty good and the plate cap has broken off, so that's got to go. I also notice that a couple of the tubes are not what's specced out. For example, according to the tube chart, this guy should be a 12CA5 audio output tube, and I've got a 12C5, which might be a valid substitution. I don't know. I'll have to double check on that. Also, the damper tube, it calls for a 12D4, and I've got a 12AX4. And uh, all these others might not be good, so I'll just quickly test them all. And then I can throw that 10 ohm resistor, and then I can try turning this on for the first time. Oh, well, something else I gotta do too is pilot light. The number 44 is burned out. I don't have any replacements on hand, so I'm gonna, gonna pop one out of another set that I know is good. I pulled out one of my other predicted chassis, thinking that I could scavenge some tubes from it temporarily, but it turns out the tube lineup is somewhat different. This is a 9L37 chassis for a holiday set, and this is a 9L38 for the tandem set. And, for example, here's the audio output tube, 5AQ5, whereas this set is using a 12CA5. There's a 7 volt filament uh, difference there. I know the tandem set has one extra tube up inside the CRT housing, so that might account for the discrepancy in the tube filament voltage. But they're also different types, so I'll have to look elsewhere for a 12CA5. Also, this set uh, also has a 12AX4 damper tube rather than a 12D4. But at least I can scavenge the horizontal output tube. And this is the chassis that I had sort of got working in a previous video. And I know all the tubes in this set are good. Uh, oh, and also I can scavenge the number 44 bulb out of this set. Right, well, I'm going to fire up my tube tester and test the rest of these. And then I'll pick up in the next video, hopefully when I'm ready to power this set up.